Praise Jesus. Got it on. Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. So good to see everybody. God bless y'all. Amen. Good to see everybody. <clears throat> Glad to see so many out in Bible class faces I hadn't seen. God is doing some great things. And I'm glad about it. Anybody glad tonight? Amen. I'm glad about it. Amen. I want to say amen. I first give honor to Jesus. I'm my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I give honor to Amen. All the I give honor to Elder and Sister Jenkins, Evangelist Scott, Evangelist Brissett on the absence. I give honor to Evangelist Hawk, Deacon Evangelist Hawkins in their absence. I give honor to the whole trustee board. I give honor to if I'm missing anybody, you all let me know. I give honor to my wife, Sister B. Jenkins. I give honor to all our deacons, Deacon Chisholm and Sister Chisholm, and to all who minors do honor you in your respective place. I thank God for you and glad to see everybody, everyone. God is good and worthy to be praised. I'm going to jump right in the word this, uh, tonight. And um, Bible class will, amen, I'm going to use the subject as a question. Amen. What do you believe is the subject text on tonight? What do you believe? And we in the church here, a lot of people know we had, I think one of the, uh, a while ago, maybe three years ago or two years ago, we had, maybe three years ago, maybe longer, but we had what you call vacation Bible class. And I was teaching the class. And I asked the question, how many ways is it to be saved? And we had, amen, a, group, a good audience. We had about 30 to 40 people in the class, vacation Bible class. And some said one, some said two, some said three ways to be saved. And sometimes you look at that and you say to yourself, well, amen, do you really know what you believe? And how many ways is it to be saved? Amen. If you're going to witness to someone and bring somebody in to what you believe, amen, you got to know what you believe yourself. Hmm? Now, everyone that had a job and that got interviewed, what did you do? You sold yourself on the interview. How did you sell yourself? Because you put out that what you were and what they believed in you was true. And you believed. See, sometimes we got to believe in ourselves and believe what we know to the point we can convince somebody else. Don't you know you got to convince a boss, to, you got to convince somebody to hire you, and you got to be self-sufficient in yourself to know that I know I can do this job. And you got to present it in that way that you got enough faith to believe God for what you ask. Now, I'm gonna get right into this. What do you believe? The first thing we got to get established when we talk about beliefs, we got to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Number one, we got to know who our God is. And Deuteronomy 6 4 says this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the Lord never changed that. Now, I want to prove that. Now, this is in the Old Testament. Now, God can be whatever he desires to be, but never ceases from being who he is. The one almighty God. God can change himself into anything. God changed himself right in front of Moses as a serpent. And then God told him, pick it up by the tail. And when he picked it up, amen, and then God used a burning bush, amen, and God, amen, put a fire in the bush, but yet the bush wasn't consumed. 
And then when God told Moses, said, amen, the ground you walk, take off thy shoes, for the ground you walk on is holy or sacred ground. God can make himself into anything, but he's still the one true God. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. No, before we even go there, let's go to John, the book of John, amen, chapter 14, and verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us, or it satisfies us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long? Time of you, and yet, has thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how saith thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for my very, what works say? God can do tremendous works. Nobody can open the eyes of the blind. Nobody can raise the dead. Nobody can heal cancer. Nobody can heal AIDS. Nobody can heal COVID. Nobody can heal leprosy. Nobody can heal anything like Jesus, but Jesus. So God was trying to tell even his disciples, when you have seen me, you have seen the one true God. Jesus is God, wrapped up in flesh. When Jesus said, create me a body, boom, he created a body, then he got in the body. The one God got in the one body. Hmm. Did y'all catch that? See, God can be whatever he desires to be, as I said before, but he never stops from being the one true God. God spoke everything in existence. Now, I wanted to establish that so we'll know Jesus is the Father. Now, you ask people, what makes him the Father? God is the Father of all creation. God created everything. How? He spoke it in existence. But the Bible said, amen, let there be light. And then, boom, there was light. And then I told you Sunday, I said God separated the waters that was in the firmament on, on top from the waters underneath the firmament. God did it all. He spoke. He's the father of all creation. Now, what makes him the son? He's the son, a man of redemption. Came to redeem the life, a man of us. He came in human form to suffer. Why did he suffer? Amen. There was no ransom that could be paid for the sins of the man, of human being, of mankind, man and womankind. See, when Adam and Eve fell, amen, there was no hope. So Jesus said, I had to come myself and be, amen, the sacrificial lamb. God is the sacrificial lamb himself. So he came and gave himself as a son form, which is in human flesh form. He wrapped up the spirit in flesh. Then he came and dwelt among us. Then he suffered, bled, and he died. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 6 says this. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is true. Now here it is, verse seven, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, Jesus, the Word, that's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. 
Now, let me break down. I didn't say, I did tell y'all about the Father, the Son. Now, the Holy Spirit, that's Jesus in the church today, dwelling as the Holy Ghost. You get a piece of God, amen. Back in the biblical days, the priest had to go before the Lord in the veil of the temple. It was sacred. And the veil of the temple, only the priest could go in. And then God said, because the priest was found, he said, I have to even go and then break the veil of the temple because sometimes the priest wasn't right. So what God did, he said, I'm going to be the high priest. And he gave himself the name, the high priest. Amen. And then he even told Moses, who should you say, who should I say sent me? I am that I am. That's who God is. He is who he is. Amen. I am that I am. That I am. I am life. I am death. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the healer. I am the deliverer. I am the way maker. I am the one that you look to. So then, there are three. So then the Spirit is the Holy Ghost in the church. Now there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, that's Jesus. The Word, amen, and the Holy Ghost. And these three or what? Or one. When you have the Father, how about I need that Father praying to the Father and the Son. When you pray to the Father, you are praying to Jesus. Praying to the Son, Amen. Jesus is the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, wrapped all up in one, sitting on the what? Right hand of God. Now. Let's not confuse that. What does it mean by sitting on the right hand of God? God, that means anytime you hear sitting on the right hand of God, that means the power of God. God has power. He sits on the power throne in heaven. That's what it means by sitting on the right hand of God. Then it backs up and says this in verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three, what? Agree in one. Now, the Spirit is Jesus. He lives in us, even on earth. And then the water and the blood, did y'all know? If it wasn't for water and blood, there would be no what? Redemption. Amen. No removing of your sins. No remission of sin. God came not by water only, not by blood only, but by water and blood. When the Roman soldiers pierced him in his side, the Bible said, Forth came, amen, water and blood, amen. What does it mean? The blood that Jesus shed, amen, was, amen, we can be redeemed of our sins, amen. We have now repentance of sin. We can come to the holy of holy, and then the water symbolizes, amen, that we are being dipped symbolically in the blood, amen, by Jesus Christ. That means that we are now cleansed of our sins, waiting to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Did y'all get that? What do you believe? Can you explain your beliefs to somebody and make them understand? We have jobs, and on our jobs, you know what you're supposed to do, and you know the rules and regulations. But can you explain it to somebody when they get there? See, you got to know what you know. And when you know what you know, nobody can't take that from you. Young man, we have some teachers here. Nobody can't take y'all degrees because you earned that. And in the church, when you know what you know, can't nobody take that from you because you know it. You sat there, you've been taught. See, you can't be a novice when it comes to God's word. You can't be a novice. Now, what I want to do is to get into we establish that our Lord, our God, is one Lord and one God. Now, what did God tell us, amen, about belief? What kind of doctrine or what kind of faith should we believe? Now, let's go back to Acts chapter 1. And we have Luke here teaching, amen, wrote the book. Acts, and he says, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, and that he, through the Holy Ghost, 
had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Now, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. In other words, submerged in the Holy Ghost not many days hence. If people truly got the Holy Ghost and got it submerged in them, you won't have that many problems in the church today. And then you'll work out, as the Bible says, work out your own soul salvation. We do that. But then here, amen, and when they were therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, you've got to have some power in order to live holy. You can't do this by yourself. You can't go on the ordinary strength you have. Why? Because it'll overwhelm you. This is why the world is full of drug addicts. Amen. People on drugs and they need to talk to psychoanalysts, psychiatrists. You got to talk to people because they can't handle the modern day's pressure. Now, I'm not against talk, talking to people like this, but they're you got to have Holy Ghost power, amen, that sometimes you can go to God in prayer and the Holy Ghost, amen, will intercede for you and work things out. So that's the first thing God told them, amen, his apostles and his uh, believers, which are disciples, amen, you got to have the Holy Ghost, amen, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, let's go to Acts 1 and 12. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where both, both Peter and James and John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Thalmier, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James, all these continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brother, holy. Did y'all see that? Mary, the mother of Jesus. Other words, now, let me go back for a minute. Jesus said this, this is not for you to know the times nor the seasons. I hear people say, I knew God was going to save you. I knew he was going to bring somebody through. You didn't know nothing. Jesus said, it is not for nobody to know the times nor the seasons when I put in my own power or when I feel with the Holy Ghost. I don't care how much a person lay hands, it's by the Holy Ghost power that God chooses to work through you. You just bring your belief and God will do the work. That's why I don't believe in a whole lot of rubbing and touching. Amen. If you put your hands on somebody's head and pray for them, God will get to where he got to get to. If it's the head, amen. If it's their body part, amen. If it's even the inward part, amen. Because I hear the word of God say God's word is quick, amen. Powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Pierces to the, amen, the asunder of soul, even the marrow of the bone, and the joints. Other words, so God can go in, amen, and do an operation without even opening you up, amen. When the word of faith is being presented through the Holy Ghost, God looks in, amen, and he don't even have to open you up. It's the word that heals. Well, tell me God ain't good. He can do anything. What do you believe? Let's go, okay. So now, we hear that a lot. People, oh, I knew God was going to say, no, we didn't. We just have faith. 
And I preached, I taught rather on last week, where we got to have faith, the centurion faith. Saints, you got to build up your most holy faith so you can just bring your faith and believe God. And you got to believe because the Bible said they was all on in the upper room. Amen. And they were waiting. Amen. And God told them, do not leave Jerusalem until you be endowed with power. Too many people leave Jerusalem. Amen. We get stammering lips. And I'm here to tell you, it's not in the jump in the shop. You got to have the tongues to go with it. The evidence is speaking in tongues. Now we're here speaking in tongues. What does that mean? You will speak amen in another language. If you speak amen English, amen. You'll speak Latin. You'll speak Espanol, amen. You'll speak Greek, amen. You'll speak another language unknown to you, amen. It's Jesus, and that is what? A miracle. Amen. So then, and I'm gonna ask again, you even watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, what do you believe? Is there anybody that can stand up and tell you what do you believe? Bishop Wade used to line us up in, all right, tell me what y'all believe. My mother, we'd have outreach and she'd have, what y'all believe? And some people would be bumbling and from, well, uh, you mean to tell me y'all been in church all your life and you don't know what you believe? I'm here to tell you, you got to know what you believe in order to fight the devil. Ephesians 6.10 said you got to have the what? Sword of the spirit to quench the fiery darts of the adversary. You can't do it without the word. And not only can't do it without the word, you got to know the word to put it in effect. You can have a lawnmower and know how to amen and say, I'm going to cut the grass. But until you know how to pull that lever and press that button, amen, to get the starter fluid going, amen, you don't you're not going to cut no grass. The word of God is the engine part, the starter fluid. You got to have the starter pulled first. You got to know what you're talking about. Nobody, amen, Jehovah's Witness will almost get you tripped up if you don't watch yourself. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. But I go to them and let them like this here. Do y'all know what Acts 2.38 says. And when we went there, they couldn't explain that. And one thing they do, they back up off. See, when you know the word, you don't have to settle or run scared from anybody. You got to know what you're talking about. Do you know what you believe? All right, now let's go. And then the Bible said, amen, Acts chapter two. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, here is cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. And then it goes down to give a whole list. These people were speaking, amen, a language they never knew, amen, from the far east, amen, to the middle east, all the way to the west, amen, and some of us speaking English. So then, God, that's the first sign that God has taken control, amen, of our life or our body. Amen. Through the evidence of speaking in tongues, God has arrived, amen, and said, I'm here now. Amen. And then the body is filled with what the Holy That's where the baptism, God has submerged you, amen. You got to be careful, folk doing a lot of shouting and dancing and shaking, but if you don't hear no evidence, amen, of speaking in tongues, you don't have it yet. You got to wait until the tongues come. 
That's why we in here, we call on Jesus. Amen. You got to call Jesus. And then sometimes we used to, back in the olden days, we used to call Jesus more than folk would be tearing. Amen. Or calling on Jesus. You got to let them seek. You got to want to seek God. Amen. Seek him and he may be found. Amen. You can't keep calling Jesus. Oh, let somebody else be. You got to stop for a minute and see if they're calling on Jesus. Because this thing is not the one done in no corner somewhere. And then people, you can't tell nobody that they got it. People got to know for themselves that they got the Holy Ghost. Because you got to give an account to God for telling folk that. God didn't tell us to tell nobody, amen, that they got the Holy Ghost. He just said, be a witness. Bring, bring people to Christ, amen. In other words, he said, all we got to do is plant the seed. And what he said, and who will give the increase? Jesus said, I'll give the increase. Don't you try and do it. Let me do it. I'll give the increase. So then others marking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, hearken to my words. And he was, Peter was yet preaching. And he kept on preaching. But these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing, but it is the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, preach. So, Let's stop right there. You hear people, oh, God ain't saving nobody today. People don't want to hear the word of God. You just do what God said and watch him say. We baptize, amen, a woman in the wheelchair. Amen. Baptize two others. If you preach the pure, unadulterated word of God, there'll be a change now. What I want to say to that is this. When you receive the Holy Ghost, let's go to, let's back up here. Sometimes we got to put this thing in reverse a little bit, then put it in neutral, then put it in drive and go. Let's go back to, let's go to Mark 16, 17 and 18. When you receive the Holy Ghost, the church won't stay stagnant when you got the truth. Let me say this. When you know what you believe, this is why I ask the question, what do you believe? When you know what you believe, God will add to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, what does the Bible say? What does Mark 16, 17, 18 say? These signs shall follow them that what? That believe. And then he says what? In my name shall they cast out. In other words, there's power in the church. Holy Ghost power. There's healing power in the church. You got to know what God can do. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall take up serpents. Now we know we don't just pick up a snake, but let me say this. You don't know who got a snake spirit that you've been dealing with. And sometimes God will move you out the way from around snakes, amen, and you didn't even realize it. And then God said, you'll drink deadly poison and it won't harm you. You don't know when you ate something. Some of us might have got sick somewhat because you don't know you went somewhere and ate and you got sick. And some people have went somewhere and ate, got sick and died. But God said it wouldn't harm you. The Holy Ghost power. This is the Holy Ghost power. Now, let's say when I say now, what do you believe? Let's go to Acts. Let's go. Let's put it in drive now. Let's go to Acts 2 and 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Hmm. They that gladly received his word meant they that gladly believed the truth. 
were baptized, and there were added unto them 3,000 souls. But let me back up. Let me just put it in reverse for a minute. I have seen people in church, even before they got baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. I have seen people come out the water and receive the Holy Ghost. And they had to call on Jesus one time because God knows, that's what I said earlier, God has put in his own power. He knows when to say it. And then God will take his time. He'll let somebody get amen the word because some of us are like, amen, we're like Philip and them and asking, Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. So God sometimes have to let people be explained. That's why preachers are here to explain the what apostles' doctrine. Now let's back up a minute. Acts two thirty seven. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now let's stop right here. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Peter knew the word. This is the same Peter that used to cuss. He cut a man's ear off. But when you talk about knew the word of God and the doctrine, Peter had it together. He said, repent. What does repentance mean? It means a change of mind. A change the way you are living. You cannot, amen, stay the same, do the same thing and still come to church, amen. You're still defiled. So you got to change your surroundings. You got to change the way you live. You got to change your friends. You got to change the things you do. There got to be a change in you. And then the other thing, Peter said, amen, and be baptized, every one of you. I'm going to say this. We sing this song, a wonderful change, but the change don't come until we receive the Holy Ghost. You remember back sometime we got to go back. Somebody said, we don't want to sing that song. Let's go back to the old time. But sometimes we got to go back to the old time way and say, just take me to the water to be baptized. In what? The name of Jesus. And then after people get baptized, I've been down in Jesus' name. I don't care what the world say. Uh, want, no, it's not a wonderful change. If folk haven't got the Holy Ghost yet, there hasn't been a wonderful change yet. And we can't make people or rush them along and say, amen, they have received, because people have gotten baptized and said, I got saved today. No man, no sir. You got to break word down so people can totally understand what you're talking about. That's why it's good to have classes so you explain to people what they're getting into. There's no reason to rush people, amen, to the water. Because what they'll do is they'll go down a, amen, a dry devil cup. They'll go down a dry devil and come up, on, amen, a wet devil. Other words, you want people to be changed by the renewing of their mind. People got to get a change, a mindset. This ain't about numbers. This is about the Holy Ghost. This is about kingdom building here. We're trying to build Holy Ghost. We're trying to build God a Holy Ghost house here. We're not trying to bring people here so everybody can be stars, amen, and this one can do that, that one can do this, amen. This is about kingdom building. We're trying to bring in souls. This is the hospital where souls got to come in and we got to, amen, have, amen, the anesthesia. We got to have the antibiotic. That is the Holy Ghost that are dry and sin out. Good God, no matter. The Holy Ghost is the antibiotic. That's the only thing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. 
Don't you know that's what's keeping you right now? You would have lost your mind. You would have given up. You wouldn't be here sitting here dressed up, sitting in heavenly places. God has done so many great things with us, amen, because we heard the word and he chose us before the foundation of the world. You know, I can just shout out that alone. God chose me out of all these others. He chose me. I don't have nothing to complain about. Amen. There's no time to be mumbling and grumbling. It's time to give God the glory. That's why I'm happy that God just chose me. Now, God said the promises under them, and we hear so many times, people don't want to be saved <laughs> because they don't want to hear. But if you preach the word of God, people will get saved. Now, and I just told you, these what signs? These signs that you preach and believe shall follow them that what? Believe. In my name, Jesus said. There lies the power. The power is in the name of Jesus. Father God, no ma'am, no sir. When I pray, Lord Jesus, you got to say it. Lord Jesus, the church got to go back to that. Lord Jesus. God, God, God. No, Jesus is his name. Some of us want to fight people because we want to call them out our name. But God's name is Jesus. He has given himself a name which is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. And then look at here. Acts 2, 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs, what? Wonders and signs. Wonders? God is a wonder. Do y'all know what, uh, when the Lord sent the manna down, when the Israelites was in the desert, they just got out of Egypt, and they didn't have no food, and God rained manna from heaven. And what is manna? The definition is, what is it? Or, it's a wonder. Don't know what it is, but can you imagine? God had something so tasty, and it gave them nutrients that they could go on. <laughs> God fed his people. Amen. And then signs means miracles follow them that believe. How many of y'all had a miracle done in your life? Good God, my master. That's why the Bible says signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow them that believe. If you preach and believe the apostles' doctrine, there ought to be some evidence of what you preach. There ought to be somebody, amen, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to be going down in the water in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to be getting healed. Somebody marriage ought to come together. Somebody ought to be coming back to the church. believe Jesus and believe in its entirety, the church will, will start to fill up. Every Sunday I've been taking note and I said every Sunday we've been getting more and more and more and more. And we can't stop. You got to work on building God a Holy Ghost house. What do you believe? Sometimes we, we look at the the things that's not so important. This ain't, I don't care who don't speak to me. It don't matter. I, I'm here to do a job. I got an assignment to do. Saints, let's stay on course. We got an assignment. We got to bring, amen, the lost, amen, and the Pope, amen. God got the table spread, amen. He got somebody that know the word of God, that can preach and each amen and know the formula of salvation amen so let's go to Acts 4 and 12 it is we're doing good so far with time now what Acts 4 and 12 said neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved <laughs> There is no other way we can be saved and set calling on the name of Jesus. Now, confession is made, people say confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. Now, 
Confession is made unto salvation. What does that mean? Amen. Confession, you confess that God filled you with the Holy Ghost when? When you speak in other tongues. You can't remember just repeat words without a change. There's got to be a mind change. There's got to be a mind change. And if we, and I'm going to show y'all something that's true. Stephen was killed by Paul. Paul laid his clothes down and he was so happy to kill Stephen. He was stoned to death. And I like it how Stephen said, he looked up to heaven and said, Lord Jesus, calling on God. He said, what? Lord Jesus. In other words, the apostles knew God's name. Saints, we got to bring back the name to the church. Good God, that's where the power lies. Then we got to bring back the faith and belief to the church. That's the only way the church is going to survive today. We got to bring the belief back. Amen. What's going to make people pull up out of their covers, amen, and come off of Facebook and look, amen, and come to church and say, I want to be saved? You got to have enough power to go through the internet to touch somebody's heart to say, I want to be baptized. I heard the word on the internet. We say everything is about the devil. No, it's not. Jesus had it to be this way. <laughs> and we got, to, we got to take advantage of everything that the way that these are the last and evil days, y'all. So some folk watch, amen, church on TV, but you don't think God can touch a heart from the, amen, from the uh, internet? Yes, he can. He can touch a heart from Twitter? Yes, he can. He can touch a heart from YouTube? Yes, he can. As well as he can be in the church here. Amen. Everything belongs to Jesus. Did you hear Jesus say, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all of them that the world are in. Then I heard him back up and say, all souls are mine. Everything belongs to the Lord. So I like it when, amen, when Paul begins, amen, in Acts. Chapter 9, Paul get breathing out threatenings. And I want to let y'all know how terrible Paul was. Let's, let me just back up a little bit. Acts chapter 8 and verse 3 says, As for Paul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. For what? Calling on Jesus. Because they believed the apostles' doctrine. I'd rather believe the apostles. Now, now, let me break this down. I'm going to say this to the church and to all those, amen, that's trying to gain friendship of people. People cannot bless you. You might as well break the friendship and break, amen, the whole of trying to go out to dinner, amen, being around people, amen, that don't believe like you believe. They'll never accept you. We're trying to make friends with people that don't even like us. And I'm going to make them my friends. People are going to hate you because of the name of Jesus. And guess what? You got to be all right with it. I'm all right being an eagle by myself because I know where my blessings come from. I know who calls me to be blessed. It wasn't me, it's Jesus. He wakes me up every morning, amen, in my right mind. And therefore, I have my being, been able to get up on my feet, amen, in my, I'm 60 years old and still have the use and activity of all my limbs. Don't you tell me God ain't good. Watching younger men than me, they say, we can't get out on the floor like that, Mr. Jenkins and do that work like that. But God bless me. Sometimes I'm hurting, but God still gives me the power and the energy to perform every day. What, so what should I do? I should say, thank you, Jesus. Paul was so bad, he, ended, he had people go to jail. But if you believe, I'm here to tell you, these signs shall follow them. That's why we have gone to churches and some people, I said, oh my God, they in church? And then I had to catch myself and say, Lord, forgive me for saying that. Because somebody could look at me and say, what, you in church? Because you know behind closed doors, you know, some of us cut up and act up too. 
We had a, amen, we got some skeletons in the closet. We weren't always, we weren't always in church. We weren't saved, amen. Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, come on y'all. The Commodores, come on. Come on. Superfly, come on y'all. No, I think y'all don't know now. And we didn't call it the club back then, we call it the disco. <laughs> And some of y'all, even though you didn't dance and do what everybody else did, you were there. So then, the Lord blessed us and put a change in us. And then we see in Acts chapter 9, and Paul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired letters. In other words, and if he found any in this way that believed in the apostles' doctrine, what do you believe? Are you afraid to tell somebody what you believe because they won't be your friend? Are you afraid you may get punished because or you may get more work put on you because you believe in Jesus Christ? It don't matter. I've done work. Amen. I've been the last on the totem pole. People have took advantage of me even on job. But God, amen, had my ladder in to be better than my first in. Because I what? Took a stand for what? Righteousness. And then look what the Lord did for Paul. And as he journeyed, he came into Damascus. And suddenly, that's what God would do. Suddenly. That's where signs and wonders come in. Suddenly. Amen. He journeyed. Amen. And there was a light shone round about from where heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, when I persecuted thou me. When people are fighting against you, they ain't fighting against Amen. You, they fighting Jesus. And you got to understand you, we can't take things personal. Because this is a spiritual warfare. This is a spiritual fight. In other words, we're not fighting against carnality, we're fighting against, amen, principalities, power. Do y'all know the devil got power? But Jesus got all power. You're fighting against a demonic spirit, amen. I've been preaching for a while, amen, against witchcraft and manipulation, amen. Spiritual, amen, ungodliness in the church, amen, and evilness, amen. And until we get it out of us, we can't grow. So then, Saul, amen, why persecuted thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, what? I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what? The man that killed people, what would you have me to do? Now, that's what God would do. Some of us, amen, some of your worst enemies, God looking to save them. That's why he said, I'll make your enemies your foot. God didn't say, I'll kill your enemies. He said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. God will save them that, amen. God, or God will turn it around. Your enemies will need you. <laughs> why do you think people don't like us? Because we Jesus only. People can't figure you out. You used to work a job and the man tell me, I don't know what it is about you. You act so funny. So I said, well, what is it that I do so? I don't know. But I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't have to tell me. I already knew it's about the Jesus I serve. Yes. That Jesus, amen, the Holy Ghost get amongst that demonic spirit. People can't sit still. They don't even like to be nowhere around you. And you don't have to tell nobody don't cuss in front of me. People are real like, oh, excuse me, you go to church. You got to live something to show somebody something. Jesus is all we need. And then if we go to Acts 10 44, talking about Cornelius. <laughs> and let me tell you something, the Gentiles didn't believe, but God said his prayers came up as a memorial before the Lord. Watch it who we say that won't be saved. And some of us, all we do is go to our own kind and our own color. But sometimes God will move you to talk to somebody else. Amen. The witness under them. Because sometimes we tell people all the time, yeah, and yeah, come on to church. Yeah, I'm coming. Come on to church. Yeah, I'm coming. Leave folk alone. Yes, <laughs> Let God do the work. Yes, Amen. 
He said, what I'll draw and what we got to pray, we got to stop saying, Lord, come, come to Lord, give them a mind. Bishop Waiters used to be throwing down up here on Wednesday night. Give them a mind, Lord. Give them a mind, Lord. And I couldn't understand Bishop saying that because it's the truth. The Bible is right. If God don't give, no man can come except the Lord draw the mind. So you got to pray, Lord, give people a mind. You can't keep backing your children. Give up. Uh, Y'all need to come to church before you go to hell. Y'all gonna die and be died in your sin. Leave people alone. Amen. Leave your children alone. Just pray and ask the Lord. Give them a mind, Lord. Save them, Lord. Give them a mind, Lord. Stop being amen. <laughs> Stop talking about people so much. Give them a mind, Lord. Your brothers and your own sisters. Give them a mind, Lord. Just because God bless you, everybody don't see what you see. And then in God's own time, he'll bring people in. But you got to pray and hold fast to your prayers. Saints, we're trying to build faith. That's what I'm trying to build tonight. This is about faith. It's a faith work and a faith walk. And if you don't have no faith, you're not going to be able to, amen, do what God would have us to do. And that's what? Win souls. We can't get in our own several arguments and fusses and fights, amen. We got to, amen, dismiss, amen, evilness, amen, and bring on goodness, amen, and righteousness. This is the hospital, the spiritual hospital, where we got to get folk in and out. We got to bring them in so they can get their soul right. So when they go to go to sleep, because we're going to leave here just as sure as we were born. Once upon a time, a man to what? Die. And after that, come the judgment. And we want to be saved. And then even in Acts chapter 19, Paul having come up through the upper and let me just finish this. Acts 10, 44 in Cornelius house. How they were praying and the Bible said the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they did what? They spoke? Did they speak? With tongues as the spirit. And then the Bible said they were shocked even though they came Amen. With Paul and them, they said they were shocked because on the Gentiles was poured out the Holy Ghost. Don't be surprised when you see different folk in here. <laughs> your old boyfriend, your old girlfriend, your old baby dad. Don't be surprised now. God can do anything. Anything. Don't be surprised. You see a prostitute come in here half dressed. But if you present Jesus at the altar, God will change him. Don't be surprised when you see the pimp come walking up in here. Amen. Don't be surprised when we see the homeless people come walking up in here. Because did God, did God heal the man that had the legion of demons? This is the thing I'm afraid of today. We got all this Bible knowledge. And we got the name of Jesus that got all the power. But what bothers me is, is there enough the power in the church of the believers to get folk off of them hard drugs, to bring back a person that got psychiatric problems? Is there enough the power in the church, amen, to heal, save, and deliver? There is. But the people got to believe. Saints, we got to turn back and believe what God said. We got to go back to the, let's go back and let's do our first works. Our first works, amen, first fruits of, of the word of God is repentance. We got to go back and do our first works all over again. Sometimes you got to rededicate yourself to the Lord. You got to know when you have messed up and you got to have a rededication. Sometimes you got to lay your soul down. You got to lay your soul, amen, take a back seat and sit down and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? You got to get your soul in order. Lord, I need a refill. Sometimes God got to refill. Am I right? He got to refill you sometimes. So, amen, and Paul, when he went up there, Acts chapter 19, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. 
And he asked the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Some people go to church and don't even know whether there be a Holy Ghost. Good God, my master. Did, did y'all hear what I just said? Some people go to church and don't even know whether there is a, such a thing as the Holy Ghost. They don't know. But Paul asked, unto what then were you baptized? So Paul had to expound the word unto them. And let me say this, saints. A church cannot get strong unless we all bind together. We, it's like a, a union. The church is like a union. You want to see God do great things, the church got to get together. Sometime in church, and sometimes I wonder what people come to church for. Some of us on our phones, some of us, amen, are talking. This is not the social hour or the social club. This is what we come to worship at. And then we wonder why when it comes time to be blessed, God didn't bless you in your house. Where is your faith unto the Lord? We got to bring, not only got to bring back righteousness in, but we got to bring back sincerity. That's what's missing in the household of faith. Sincerity in God's house. God bless you on tonight. What do you 